Thank you, Glenn. I feel like I should have typed ooey into the chat box or something to carry on your momentum. So I did have, I told Glenn I had Cafe Bustello. I didn't really, but back to coffee or for water now, but that's okay. So my name is Todd Schaefer. I'm the manager of research for VectorVest. Uh, I'm on now my 15th year, I think. So uh, beyond being the manager of research, I'm also the coach, one of the coaches and instructors for the successful investor group. So let's pause and anybody out there who's part of that successful investor group or been through the coursework, give a shout out, let people know that you're there and maybe you can answer some questions in the chat box as it's coming through. That'll be really helpful. But this lead off talk is our opportunity to talk about some of the tools and techniques that we use as successful investors that'll also lay the foundation for the presentations we're gonna do throughout the balance of the day. So I don't want to keep it all just theoretical uh, exercises here. I also want to share some practical ways that you can use these tools and techniques, just like we do as, as successful investors. So a nice little blend with some practical applications that you can use to get your investing on a better track right off the bat. So the name of the presentation, Making Money the Easy Way, and I guess by inference, if there's an easy way, there must be a hard way. But I'm gonna guess that either you already know the hard way or you're not really interested in the hard way. Well, let's talk about making money the easy way with VectorVest. So any technique, if it's gonna be easy, right? That methodology needs to be easy to comprehend and easy to execute. In other words, it needs to be simple. Complexity is not our friend. In order to keep it simple, it also needs to be structured. So structure allows us, this, allows us to have consistent and repeatable results, right? Keys, for sure. That structure implies that there's a set of rules that guide us in the management of our portfolios. We call it a trading plan. And the beauty of a trading plan is those decisions that we make in managing the portfolio now become mechanical. It's an intellectual exercise. It's not an emotion based exercise because when we trade emotionally that's typically where most of us come off the rails because those fear and greed emotions cloud our judgment so having the plan keeps us on track and keeps this consistent right and so that's a big piece of what we do and as successful investors that simplicity also makes this routine something doable in minutes a day and doable any time of the day day or night right so you can fit your trading routine into your schedule. If that's two o'clock in the afternoon or two o'clock in the morning, doesn't really matter. You can still be successful and apply the tools and principles we're gonna talk about in this presentation. So to set us up for success on this trading system, we start with our core philosophy. We wanna buy rising stocks in rising markets and sell falling stocks in falling markets. We call it going with the flow. And the concept here is when the market is rising, when the broad market's rising, by definition, the majority of stocks in that market are going up. So the likelihood that the stock that I bought going up is greater. So we want to put those probabilities on our side. We put the wind at our back at every turn we can to try to improve our likelihood of finding success. In fact, going with the flow is probably the first thing you can do and will have probably the greatest impact on your trading success. If you've ever tried to go against the flow, you know how difficult that job can be as the market sells out from under you and, and kneecaps you. So let's go with the flow and when the market's not moving our direction, let's either lay back or go with the new direction of the market. So. Let's move ahead. That implies, right, going with the flow, implies that I have a methodology that will help me identify good candidate stocks and identify the current market's trend, right? Without those tools, I can flounder around a lot. So enter Dr. Delito. <clears throat> Dr. Delito, our founder, came up with the algorithms that became ultimately VectorVest. And those algorithms were designed to answer three 
basic questions that every investor needs to know. What is the stock that I'm contemplating buying really worth? How safe is it? And when should I be buying, selling, or holding that stock? So our VectorVest analysis takes an analytical approach that is based on data and facts to answer these questions. So that first question of what is the stock really worth? Well, that's a question of valuation. So the industry has a lot of ways to value stocks. The VectorVest tool creates valuations from two different perspectives. And the first is intrinsic value. What's the intrinsic value of the stock? Well, that value increases and is tied to earnings. So how does this stock perform as a financial instrument? And then and the calculation or the nexus is companies that make money increase their value. That increased value garners a higher price in the market. That's kind of the, the theoretical basis of the transaction, right? So we favor stocks that make money, more and more money, quarter over quarter, year over year. But the companies aren't, aren't making those earnings in a vacuum, right? We're operating in a broader economy. And so we need to consider economic factors like inflation and interest rates and their impact on those earnings and therefore valuations. So when, and historically, right, the last 10 years, we've had historically low interest and inflation rates. And that's great for earnings and therefore valuations, right? Very helpful. But when interest rates and inflation are high and rising, now that's a drag on earnings performance and therefore valuations. And VectorVest is the rare tool that includes those macroeconomic conditions in our valuation model. So let's see what this looks like in real life. So in your books, I've got some screenshots of the, these conditions in the market when I created these slides on the 10th of June. But I want to jump off into the program because the data that I'm taking was taken directly from our stock viewer. So, Clay, if you bring that up for me so I can see the live program. There we go. So here's our home page. The stock viewer is under the viewers tab. If I find it, there it is. And we're going to go to the stock viewer. The stock viewer is just a giant spreadsheet of the 9,199 stocks we currently are tracking in the US database. And of course we have mergers, acquisitions, deletions every day. So that number does bounce around a little bit. I think it was 9,206 or something when I took the slides a couple weeks ago. Let's call it 9,200 stocks. So a giant spreadsheet that has all 9,200 stocks in it. And you can see that we have some three dozen parameters or so going across the top of the screen. I can even create some custom parameters. And in fact, I wanna clean that up a little bit. So I'm gonna to go to my layout tool and restore the defaults. And this is how the screen would look in your own personal copy of VectorVest. And we'll look at the top 30 stocks which is an interesting conversation. The top 30 stocks, well, top how? Because they're not sorted alphabetically. They're not sorted by symbol. They're not sorted by their exchange. And by the way, the X means that there are options available on that particular stock. We're not sorted by price or the price action. We're sorted, you see a little triangle? We're sorted by VST descending. So we call this forced ranking. And the idea is I'm bringing to the top of the list the stocks that have the strongest VST score, which is our master indicator in the VST system and a big piece of what we're talking about today. So that just by way of introduction, I wanted to show you the source of the data and we can see as I move past today's price action, here is the VectorVest analysis that we're about to cover in detail. But if I keep scrolling to the right, I get to the earnings performance of the stock. And by the way, we use in our system both historical and forecast earnings because it's important to understand the prospects for the company's earnings picture. But if we keep scrolling to the right, then we come to dividend analysis. Keep scrolling to the right, we have price and volume information. Keep scrolling to the right, we have sales and market cap information. 
And we also have industry and sector information all the way at the right. And it's interesting to note, Glenn mentioned, you know, the, the market peaked for us, the VVC peaked in November. The S&P 500 peaked a little bit after that in, July, in January. But as the market pulled back, what started performing in the market, right? So the market's always cycling, but you see all these ETFs short. These are contra ETFs, right? Bear funds. And so they started performing as the market pulled back and started percolating to the top of the list. And that's one of the unique features of the stock viewer is that it's kind of self-regulating or self-cleaning. As the market cycles, and the market is always cycling, naturally the stocks that are performing the best in that market cycle start percolating to the top of the list. So at any given time, you're always looking at the freshest view of what's performing in the marketplace. All right. From a very practical perspective though, I can take all of this research, all of this analysis, and pretty powerful tool. If I wanted to know, hey, what stock in the database of 9,200 stocks pays the best dividend? Just click on the dividend heading. Click on any heading and you can resort the entire database by that indicator. If I scroll back to the left, Farmers and Merchants Bank is the top dividend payer. It's paying a $112 dividend. And before you get too excited, that's about a 1.5% yield. But just that quickly, one click of the mouse, and that's some pretty powerful analysis that's available to me in the stock viewer. So the stock viewer is a fantastic tool. But for this presentation, I don't need to look at 9,000 stocks. You'll see in, the, in our book, I set up an example of five stocks. So let's open our toolbar and I created a watch list just for our summit here. And this is where I pulled the data for the tables in the books. And of course I did that on June 10th. Now I do confess I made one mistake. When I pulled the slides, I had extended hours activated. So you'll see the timestamp is like 8 p.m. Here we're looking at closing data. So you'll see a slight variation uh, in, the, in the price points in particular. But the rest of the value should be pretty well in line. The other thing I've added to this list, right, because the stock viewer is my, is my personal stock viewer, right? So I have all the analysis, all the indicators available to me here, but the list is going to stay fixed. I've added a indicator called value divided by price, which calculates automatically for me whether a stock is over or undervalued. But let's get back to our conversation before we have that analysis. Let's take a look just at value and I can sort the list by value descending. So I have at the top of the list, the highest valued stock, which is Matador. So at this point, let's jump back into the slideshow. Because I put that information on the table and the table simplifies things a little bit for us so we can focus on uh, the pertinent data points. So here we have the same information, Matador valued at 84.40 is priced currently by the market at 64.52. Of course, this was back on June 10th, right? So we value the stock at 84.40, the market is, is only paying 64.52. So I'm getting $84 worth of stock for $64. That's good, right? So as I look at the stocks within the list, I can see that Console Energy is undervalued, Service Corp is overvalued, Enterplus is undervalued, and Integrated Media is overvalued. Now I can look at the relationship, you know, how much overvalued is it? But let's pause for a minute because stocks can be overvalued, they can be undervalued, or they can be fairly valued. And we consider fair valuation when price is within 10% of the value. How I use that information though, I need a little bit more information to make an intelligent decision. Because there are times, right, the market cycles all the time, there are times when, at the end of an extended bull run, for instance, stock prices are generally high. You have a lot of stocks that are overvalued. 
Conversely, you can have sell-offs where stock valuations or stock prices come back below their valuations, a great opportunity to buy when there's blood in the streets, right? But sometimes stocks are undervalued for a reason. So we want to avoid value traps and we want to avoid overpaying for stocks that really don't have the fundamentals that warrant paying a premium to be in that stock. And so I need more information than just the value number to make that decision. That being said, at a, on its face, it's important to know whether or not you're over or undervalued on the stock that you're, that you're considering buying. And of course, we favor undervalued stocks, right? Because again, it's putting the odds in our favor of price appreciation. So that's the first method of valuation. Our second method of valuation, if I can find my cursor, it's here somewhere is relative value. And here we're looking for the upside potential of the stock relative to a AAA corporate bond. So in the algorithm, we include things like price, value, earnings growth rate, what are the current AAA bond rates, and how much risk. That all goes into our relative value score. And here we introduce our zero to two convention because we don't wanna just give you more data points to memorize. We're trying to convey the, the analysis in a way that you can use it as useful information. So on a zero to two scale, one is neutral. Values above one are positive, values below one are negative. The closer you get to the extremes of zero and two, the stronger that indication. So stocks that have a value above one, an RV value above one, should outperform that AAA corporate bond in the next one to three year time frame. So that's relative value. So let's add relative value to our table. So now, who's interested in relative value, upside potential? Well, growth investors, right? So if you're a growth investor, your ear should be perking up because of the stocks that we listed here, Matador Resources is far and away the stock that has the strongest upside potential at 1.76. In addition, we know that it's also currently undervalued. So an undervalued stock that has great upside potential. Enterplus and Console also have good upside potential, right? A little bit weaker than Matador. Enterplus is undervalued, as is Console Energy. So it really becomes a matter of, well, okay, maybe I want some more information to distinguish which of those three is my preference. But notice that Service Corp and Integrated Media are both below one, so they're gonna underperform the bond. Let's take a look at the numbers, 0.84 for Service Corp, and it was overvalued, and so was Integrated Media. So I have a couple overvalued stocks that are likely to underperform the bond. Well, why would I wanna do that? Well, because all investors aren't investing for growth. If you're a conservative investor, particularly a conservative investor looking for income, you put a priority on stability, right? If the company has fallen out of growth phase, well, I'm okay with that because I'm looking for a consistent and reliable dividend payment. So stability is more important than growth. So that's why we might still consider stocks that have relative value scores below one and also, really, why I might consider paying a premium in a rocky market condition in particular, why people might be flocking into Service Corp for safety, right? It's a, it's a risk off kind of play. All right, so that was the first question of what's the stock worth? The second question was, well, okay, for that upside potential, how much risk am I taking on? How safe is the stock? And so our second indicator is relative safety, an indicator of risk. And here, a, a stock that has high safety scores has consistent and predictable financial performance. Right? Those are the primary factors driving our safety analysis. Again, we're on that zero to two scale, so stocks that have relative safety scores above one are above average in the database. And of course, the higher the value, the better they are. So let's apply safety now to our table and see how that improves our perspective. 
So now, well, lo and behold, Service Corp is the highest safety, has the highest safety score of all the stocks in the table. Matador Resources, though, is in the hunt, right? Three hundredths of a point is not a large differential. So both of those stocks have high safety scores. We already indicated that Service Corp, while its upside potential is limited, it is also overvalued. Matador Resources has similar safety, but has great upside potential and is also undervalued. So where does your preference lie? Would you rather have the upside potential, right? Or would you rather have the stability that is coming with Service Corp? If we look at the bottom performers, notice that the relative safety, and at 0.94, again, you'd hear fractionally, so essentially parity, it's the average for the database. So enter plus of average safety has good upside potential. It was undervalued as well. Console energy, undervalued, good upside potential, but below average safety. So these are a little more aggressive, right? I would expect to see with lower safety scores, more price volatility. And our friends down here at Integrated Media, while they were overvalued, they had weak upside potential and they are, also don't have much safety. Right, so that's starting to look more like a speculation where I don't have much upside potential and I, have, I can expect some volatility, low safety. That puts me in my own little special category, doesn't it? So let's round this out now because we've answered those questions of how safe or what's the stock really worth? What's the safety of that stock? The last question, which was a compound question is, well, when should I be buying, selling or holding? So if you remember, our core philosophy was that we want to buy rising stocks in rising markets. So we have a technical indicator now to help us identify stocks that are in uptrends. It's called relative timing. And it's an indication of the short term price trend of the stock. We look at the direction, magnitude, and dynamics of historical price to determine that relative timing score. Again, on the zero to two scale, so if you see a value above one, that means the short term trend of the stock is rising. The higher that value up to a max of two, the stronger that trend. Let's add our T to our graph, and now we can see the price trend of each of these stocks. So the stock that's in the highest or strongest uptrend is Enter Plus, right? Undervalued, good upside potential, average safety, and it's in the strongest price trend. Console and Matador are running neck and neck. Right, we'll make a little derby analogy there. But if you remember, right, Console Energy is undervalued, good upside potential, but a lower relative safety score, so a little bit more volatile. Matador Resources, is undervalued, had good upside potential and good safety, and is in a pretty good uptrend, but really becomes this balancing act then of, okay, in that uptrend, do you have a preference for growth or for safety? Or are you more prudent and you would like that balanced and get both? You want your cake and eat it too. Service Corp, remember it was overvalued had weak upside potential, but good safety. It's also an uptrend, it's just not as strong an uptrend as those other stocks, but would I not expect that from the narrative we've been putting together on Service Corp? And our good friends at Integrated Media, well, I think strike three here, but we're overvalued, weak upside potential, below average safety, and we're in a very strong downtrend, right? 0 0.01, zero's the bottom. So a very strong downtrend, we call that a three-time loser. Why would anybody buy that stock? Well, they buy that stock because they're a speculator. And so speculators aren't looking for, the, for fundamental strengths in the company. They're looking for opportunities that haven't been realized yet. Does the company represent a, a new technology or a new methodology that will be groundbreaking? Maybe they're about to get a patent approval or win a court case or get a drug approval, right? So external events that are gonna impact the price action on that particular stock and we're speculating on that happening. So there's a place for that, but we would also say that even if you wanna take on a speculative position, 
could we at least wait until the, stop, the price stops dropping like a rock? <laughs> when it finds a bottom and stabilizes and the market's generally rising, recovering, maybe that's a better time to take on your speculative position. All right, so that's RT. We bring all of that analysis together into our master indicator called VST vector or VST for short. So here we're combining mathematically the relative value, relative safety, and relative timing analysis into a single comprehensive indicator. And so this is more of a balanced approach, right? a kind of a prudent approach where we're looking for uh, good average analysis on these indicators. And it also allows us to compare stocks that are at different price points, different market caps, different industries, different sectors. It lets us compare them on an apples to apples basis. So let's add VST to our table and see what it's telling us, All right? So RV is favored by folks who are looking for growth. Relative safety was favored by folks who were looking for consistency and predictability of stable price performance. And RT was traders looking for stocks that are in strong price trends. VST is that balanced prudent approach which is combining those three mathematically. So our top VST stock is Matador Resources, again, running neck and neck with Enterplus, right? And so we've done the analysis a couple times, but both were undervalued. I'm sorry, both were undervalued. Both had good upside potential. Matador was safer, so if that's your premium, then Matador would get the nod. But Enterplus was in the stronger price trend. So if you're chasing price, then that would get the nod. Both of them have strength overall on that balanced approach. Both of them might be very good choices, but now you can select based on your particular temperament, your objectives. Console Energy is still a great candidate with 1.4 at the VST level. So we can go into the list, right? We can go, there's some depth to the list. You don't have to just look at the top one or top two. Service Corp is also still above one, and our poor little integrated media technology down here at 0.44 starts looking like a shorting candidate, not a bullish candidate, right? Although with a dollar price of $2.77, uh, maybe not a very good shorting candidate either. But we're buying strength, we're selling weakness. And that's true, by the way, for bear markets, if you want to play the market to the downside, sell weakness, sell low VST stocks that have horrible fundamentals and are in downtrends, right? We just flip the script. Majority of us though think in terms of bullish markets, so that's where we're gonna stay at least for this presentation. But remember the three questions we were answering is, what's a stock worth, how safe is it, when should I be buying, selling, or holding? So we know that we're buying stocks that are in uptrends, and maybe if it's in our temperament, favoring those that have good fundamentals. We're now gonna to answer the second piece of that question is, remember we wanted to sell falling stocks. So falling stocks, well, stock prices is, don't just go up, right? They ebb and flow. So really what we mean is a rising stock is in an uptrend when that uptrend fails, that's when we'd like to get out of the stock, right? That's when we want to sell the stock. So our stop price is an indication of when that's happening, when it's time to do that. So we assign a stop price to every stock in the database every day. And it's based on the 13 week moving average of price, but we make an adjustment based on the fundamentals of the stock. So stocks that have strong fundamentals, we actually move the stop price away from the price action to keep us in it longer, right? Because high VST stocks, stocks with good fundamentals tend to be resilient to market pullbacks. And so we wanna give them more room to breathe. However, stocks that have weak fundamentals will actually adjust the stop price closer to the price action to be more sensitive to the adverse move and get us out faster. Now that being said, we're still based on a 13 week moving average of prices. So 13 weeks, right, a five day week, 65 day moving average equivalent. That is not a trader's tool, right? That time frame is relatively long. 
So more of a position to uh, investor time frame. But it is useful in that it gives us a point of reference right, from which to operate. So let's take a look at the stop prices for our stocks. And again, I sorted by stop, but the imperative here is the price for Service Corp at 68.66 is above its stop price. And as prices accelerate, they'll typically move further away from their stop price because the price is moving higher faster than the stop price is. But all of these stocks are above their stop price except for integrated media. We're priced at 277, the stop price is at $9.53. So first of all, talk about overextension, right? So that's really accelerating to the downside faster than that moving average. But it's also picked up accelerating. That little cell in the recommendation column, right? Is there because the price has fallen below stop price. And that's a nice segue because everything we do at VectorVest is based on facts and analysis. So every day we're assigning a buy, sell, or hold rating to every stock in the database based on a set of rules. There's nobody's gut intuition or, you know, they watch the conference call and they like the CEO, so let's buy some. There's none of that going on. It's all driven by the data or data. My wife is always yelling at me because she likes data. But here are the rules. So we know the first rule, the sell rating comes when the price has fallen below the stop price. When that happens, you'll get a sell rating. If the stock is operating above the stop price, it'll have a hold rating in the system. And I like to call these ratings because they're adjectives, not verbs. Right? To get a buy rating, if you have a buy rating in the stock, there may be 2,000 stocks in the database that have a buy rating because they've met the criteria of the rule. We're not telling you to go out and buy 2,000 stocks today. The idea is these are adjectives. I know that if a stock has a buy rating, that stock is currently above its stock price and pulling away from it. In other words, it's accelerating faster than that adjusted moving average. It also has to have an RT score above one, which means from that analysis, it's in an uptrend in the short term. And then finally, it has to have a VST score above one. Well, remember VST was derived by combining relative value, relative safety, relative timing. Well, if relative timing has to be above one, then the likelihood that RV or RS, or maybe both are above one is high. So to restate this, when I see a stock that has a buy rating in the VectorVest system, I know that it's in an accelerating uptrend and it has some fundamental strength. Now there might be more things I wanna know, but that's a pretty good place to start. A friend of mine used to say, that's a pretty good pond to start fishing in. So we can use those recommendations to help narrow our choices, all right? And we like to say, use them as gospel or guides which means gospel says, okay, I got a sell rating, I'm selling the stock. A guide would say, it has a sell rating, let me go look at the chart and see what I wanna do. So VectorVest advocates buying safe, undervalued stocks that are rising in price, in a rising market. So we've done our analysis of the stocks. Well, what about the rising market piece, right? How do I know if the market is rising? Well, it's on the home page. And so I took a, a slide here just to keep it static for us. But the market timing gauge tells you everything you need to know. On this date, which was the 14th, the color guard was neutral. VectorVest does not advocate buying any stocks at this time. Pretty plain English, right? If we have to have a discussion of what that, that means, then, yeah, we really got to slow down. But this gauge and guidance are basically summarizing the top row of these lights in the color guard gadget below. So we have three yellow lights, the needle's pointing straight up in the yellow. Well, we also have now six days history of those lights. And why do we do that? Well, because we want to have context of what the current guidance is telling us. Right now, we're not buying any stocks, we're in a yellow condition, but our market, our market condition is getting better, or are they getting worse? Or are they just kind of bouncing around, staying neutral? So by seeing the history now, 
we can see that we transitioned out of strength, picked up more and more red lights into weakness. Today, we're moderating a little bit in that downtrend because we picked up some yellow lights. We also have timing signals. In this trend column, we have our short-term trend, our underlying trend, and our slowest, most conservative timing signal, the confirmed call, so our longest trend indication. And all three of them are in down status. So down, down, down status, that pretty sound advice not to buy stocks at this time. All right, so we're looking for signals on when that trend is likely to change. And so when it changes, what'll happen? Well, the first thing you'll see is the fastest trend indicator will change from down to up. We'll start picking up green lights in the color guard, so this gauge will go into the green. And then you'll start seeing the longer term. You know, if the, if the rally extends, you'll start seeing the longer term signals move. So we can pick our, our spot on that continuum of fast to slow signals incorporate that into our rules of when we want to buy stocks. So that daily guidance is showing us what's going on under the hood. If you're new to the system, then you can see also, if I scroll down here, every day, oh, I'm sorry, that was a screenshot, every day, if I come over here on the homepage, every day we do a market analysis video. One of the instructors at VectorVest does a recap of the market and reviews the status of the market timing system. We also have in our daily newsletter guidance on what the current market conditions are. All right, so there are a lot of helps within the system to help us identify what's going on currently in the market. So, Let's turn the corner and do a little practical exercise, right? Now, as you saw, and when we first started talking, the market has been pulling back since November, right? So we've had a couple market bounces and looking at it today, we're having another 2% swing, right? So hello, market volatility. Yes, I've come to know you and you're still here. So we're up 2% on the VectorVest composite today. So big up day big enough to change our primary wave, our fastest timing signal to up. But I still don't have any green lights on the color guard. So only the most aggressive traders who are playing that fast signal would be taking any positions today to the bull side. We also saw in the stock viewer that on that market pullback, we had a bunch of country ETFs that had percolated to the top of the list, right? So. Right now, because we've seen a change in the short-term trend, the guidance says use caution if you're going to buy stocks at this time. So let's make the assumption that we see a bullish market and that it's okay to be buying stocks. So here's a very practical application of how we can put all the power of the VectorVest tools that we just went through together in a very simple approach. So let's go back over to the viewers tab, if I can find it, there it is. And let's go back to the stock viewer. And now looking at today's data, right? Streaming at 1035, this is real time data. Here are the top stocks sorted by VST. So this is where I would go looking for candidates that I wanna buy. Now to make this demonstration a little bit more cohesive, I'm just gonna tag all 30 of these stocks. At least I think I'm going to. Hold the shift key, I click on it, I've tagged them all. I'm gonna right click on them and add them to my watch list. So I'm creating a second watch list now and we're gonna call this Top VST. So now I have populated the watch list I created. Here are the same 30 stocks sorted by VST descending. So these are the candidates that I'm considering for the day. And so I need a process of identifying which of these stocks are the best for me in my particular temperament. That process would start by looking at the stock viewer data, right? Maybe I want to eliminate any pink sheets if I see them in here. 
One of the things I like to do is I like to make sure that the stocks have positive earnings. Now, if they are ETFs, they may not have earnings data. And in fact, that reminds me, we had a bunch of contra ETFs. I'm going to sort by industry. I'm not interested in buying a contra ETF that goes up when things go down, right? Because I'm bullish here. And I'm trying to grab that line. So ETF short, let's scroll down and I'm going to eliminate from the list any contra ETFs that are in the list, right? I'm just going to delete them from my watch list. And so now I've shrunk the list from 30 down to 27. Coming back to the left, I'm going to eliminate any stocks that aren't currently making money. They need to have positive earnings. Here's one that doesn't, so let's, I can also delete it from here. I also want to see them have positive growth rates. And bear with me because the resolution is turned down for this video presentation, but they're all positive growth rates, so that's good. Everybody's making money and they're growing those earnings. If I scroll to the right, I'm also interested, particularly in troubled economic times, I'm interested to make sure that the stocks have positive sales growth. Why? Well, it's really hard to maintain profitability if your sales are dropping, right? There's only so much cutting you can do. So let's make sure that everybody has positive sales growth and they do. All right. So that's me culling just on the data. Now let's take a look at their graphs. And we have a technique called vector vest simple. And the idea here is that graphs, Dr. Delito likes to say, graphs are the DNA of a stock. So in your program, you'll have a layout called VectorVest Simple. So we're using that layout, but I'm only gonna look at the price and the earnings performance over a one year time frame. And I'm interested in seeing price action that goes bottom left to upper right, smoother the better. And if it's at that nice 45-ish degree angle, that's sustainable price action over time. Now, of course, the market peaked in November, so we're going to see a lot of stocks that are in pullback. And what I'm really interested in seeing is that if they're recovering, they're in uptrend in the short term. I also want to see earnings per share going bottom left, upper right, smoother the better. At least stable, right? So we're... we're kind of leaking out here a little bit on CVLG, but we're still within about 10% of the peak, so I would consider that to be acceptable. But the first thought exercise I want to do here real quickly is just toggle through these stocks. And you should have a kind of a visceral reaction, right? You're very good at recognizing patterns. Are these stocks going bottom left, upper right, smoother the better? Do they have earnings patterns that are doing the same? And the idea is we want to focus from this prudent perspective, right? We're looking at a longer term time frame. We want to favor stocks that have persistent price graphs. And it shouldn't be terribly surprising that when the market's falling, a lot of those price graphs are breaking down. Right? So let's just run through the exercise because a lot of folks respond to that, but there are other folks who look at it and go, I'm looking at Swiss cheese, I don't understand. So we have a process that we use as successful investors to help us train uh, new users or train ourselves on how to read these graphs. So let's start by just focusing in on the earnings per share pro portion. I'm going to scroll back to the top. Do we like the earnings performance for CVLG? Bottom left, upper right. Stable, leaking a little bit, but I'm gonna let that one go. Good, good. And eh, it, it fell, but now we've recovered stable. All right, so the stair step idea is the Goldilocks scenario, but here we have LNG has fallen from about 850 down to 750. That's more than 10%. So LNG is coming off the list. Minimize that, find LNG. Where'd you go? Take it off the list. Now, its situation may change, it may recover, but for right now, I'm not interested. 
I have some other great candidates from which to choose. MICS, not a chance. I'm just going to kind of remember that. A couple of ETFs. DQ actually kind of flat to its prior high. And DVAX, down more than 10%. So CVIX and DVAX come off the list. There's DVAX and CEIX was up here. I hold the control key and I can tag both and I delete them off the list. So what I'm doing through this process is I'm culling from the list leaving only the stocks that are meeting my criteria in the list. And we're coming into the end here. So SIGA, not so much. So let's call it. So my first pass is done, right? So I was able to focus in and a lot of folks like that technique because I'm not getting mesmerized by all the stuff. Right, so SIGA comes off the list. So the next pass, I'm going to graph all of these again, but now we want to look at price. So let's focus on the price action. And I'm looking for two things. First of all, just the architecture. Has the stock been in uptrend? And even if it pulled back with the market, is it now recovering? So the problem I'm having a little bit here with Covenant Logistics is that the uptrend ended and structurally this stock was in downtrend through the end of March, or end of April. We've been recovering since then. Sometimes it's helpful to drag to the left and get a little more perspective on how that stock's been performing. All right, but let's just uh, be cutthroat here and we're gonna drop CVLG. I'm just gonna look for the first stock that is actually trending higher. Oh, there's one. So I'm gonna cut everybody above ELA. we're down to what now 18 right so we're calling from the list let's keep going AutoZone also kind of moving sideways right so it's had a bounce I'm, I'm aware but I'm favoring stocks that are actually trend now here's an interesting case FNKO really moving sideways for most of the year but we finally have broken out of that pattern so do you want to take that as a breakout trade? It's got great fundamentals. It is not trending bottom left, upper right, smoother the better, All right? But this is a, a breakout trade, which you may or may not want to take based on that else. I'll leave it in there for now. The structure of these is good, even though on the right side, they may not be. MICS goes away. CWeb goes away. MICS, CWeb, GDXD, DQ. And we're getting close. And just a couple more, oops, sorry, I looked at the wrong graph. Now some of these graphs are probably popping to you as looking better than others. So BYDDF, look how gappy this price action is, right? So there's a lot of noise here. And we're coming back to prior resistance, so we'll look at that here in a minute, but I'm gonna cut BYDDF. And Builders First is still in downtrend. I'm still putting in lower lows. So BYDDF and BLDR come off the list. So do you see how I'm focusing in now on the best candidates based on that vector vest simple approach of looking for price action driven by consistently rising earnings. So the last pass that it will go through is I still want to look at price, but I want to look at it on a shorter time frame. 
and I need to get rid of this toolbar somehow. Hide, 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 hide. Let's just do this. Maybe not. Can one of you guys click on the uh, button for me? I just want to... Uh, Actually, let me do this. Never mind. Hang on a minute. I just had a thought. I want to change the time frame on a quick button to six months, which I can't see. Don't maximize it. Well, that's a good idea, Joey. Thank you, Joey. Figured it out for me. You're a genius. All right, so we went to a six-month time frame, and I'm going to add the vector vest support and resistance lines. So the last piece is I want to avoid buying stocks that are overextended in their price action, the price has gone parabolic or gapped. And I also want to avoid stocks that are near resistance. So we have the tool. Actually, I'm not sure I'm on the right graph anymore, so hang on a minute. There we go. So the, the support resistance lines are telling me, identifying for me resistance points, and we're taking this phenomenon, right? You have the pivot, you come back, you retested support, you broke through that prior swing high, came back and retested that prior high, which is a resistance, which is now support. We're bouncing, we're taking a new high. So that's a great setup for ELA. That's staying on my list. It's doing exactly what I want it to do. It's clear of resistance, no, plenty of headroom because there's no resistance above current price. Beautiful. AutoZone, it did break above this resistance point, but pattern-wise, I'm just channeling sideways, so no thanks. Penske Auto Group on the pullback has multiple layers of resistance in that consolidation. So I'm looking for stocks that are continuing. Here's a little breakout, right? Continuing to run for FNKO, my second consideration. Fang is in pullback now retesting support, but that's not Moving up, I'm looking for stocks that are rising to buy in this rising market condition. Sanderson Farm is in trend, but right now we're mid-session, mid right? So we have a red candle, so the price is actually pulling back today after a pretty impressive move from yesterday. So I'm going to wait until it's following through and moving in my direction. So through that process... My list now has been culled to just two, three candidates. I'm going to watch those candidates on the next sessions open to make sure that the market follows through and that those stocks that I selected follow through. And I'm simply going to take a position in whatever leads off the, off the open. Right? The stock that's continuing to move forward with the most acceleration, avoiding large gaps. Right? So once I have those stocks, Right, and let's pretend we used, we got a position EVLA because I like that graph. What's my system? When to buy, what to buy, when to sell. When am I going to sell ELA? Well, I'm going to sell it when it hits its stop loss. For me, that means I'm going to use the vector vest stop. And so my stop loss would be at the current value of the stop at $5.75. What I might do is also say, well, see how close I am to that support level? Maybe if I do a retest of support, I'll make a little adjustment, and that's actually put that stop loss at support at $5.59. We call that the line in the sand stop, and that's how I can size my position and control my maximum risk in the trade. So if the price from here out goes further, goes higher, if price full, pull, full pulls back, falls back uh, below the vector vest stop price, I'll get a sell rating in the vector vest system, and it's time to close the trade. So that's a very practical step-by-step -step methodology you can use to become a successful investor. That's what we do in the successful investor group. And of course, the coaching and the coursework are all about the nitty-gritty details of how that process works. But as Glenn said, our mission is to provide the best stock market guidance available anywhere at any price, and I would add the best stock instruction 
on different ways to use this tool effectively to make money consistent with your goals, your objectives. And that's really what we're doing throughout the rest of the, the day today, is using these building blocks, the tools and the principles that are, are uh, the VectorVest system, and apply them in different methodologies for different temperaments and different objectives. So with that, it's probably time for me to wrap up. I did want to share my contact information with you, Todd S. at VectorVest. If you'd like to send me a note, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. We, of course, always have live people on the telephone to help you as well as our, our links.